Florian Fournier, just joining us on stage. Thank you so much. Good to be here together. Good. So, yeah, so we're here to talk about the conscious operating system for the world. We're talking to talk about the infrastructure. Privacy is power, and we need to take back the control of our data. We need to own our digital life and our digital selves. Technology is like magic. I remember 25 years ago when I started to be in touch with the internet. For me, it was all about access. For the first time, I could connect with anywhere in the world, and actually my relationship with the internet started with music. I remember the, the first time I used the music sharing platform, Napster. It was kind of magic. It was still very genuine. We were at the beginning of the internet, and everything was still very, very real. I could feel myself like directly traveling within the tubes until someone's library, and as I was taking some of the music from that library, that same person was coming and discovering things inside my library. It was barely legal, but it was an amazing experience. Uh, we all felt still in power. Then I started, fast forward, I started to host all my files, my video, my pictures, into my home computer and into a hard drive. And then a couple of years later, as I was leaving France to live in Thailand for my first job, the day before I left, actually, my computer and my hard drive got stolen. From one day to the other, my entire digital life was gone. And that day, I saw that someone, someone at some point had to create something so that this would never happen again. When I arrived in Thailand, I ended up buying my first MacBook. I felt in love with the product and I said at that, that moment that one day I would be working for Apple. When I got back to France, I ended up starting working at the headquarters in Paris and then moved to Mexico. And a year later, I was working from Sao Paulo. Everything was absolutely amazing. The company was great. The product was more exciting one than the other. And actually, I was meeting some of the most amazing people of my life. However, I don't know why, but something inside of me was telling me that something was going wrong. Everything was going way too fast. Products were being released one after the other, and there was absolutely no responsibility about what were the consequences of the usage of those products. Um, and from that bubble, I could see outside lots of poverty and inequality, and people getting more and more addicted to those devices and the applications. Somehow, it was and we will know that later, but it was the first interaction that we were having with artificial intelligence. And it felt very strange because no one was really talking about it internally and taking responsibility. And I, I felt at that moment that we could somehow create products and beautiful products that could solve some of those issues. A bit later, I started to think about how we could use actually those products to create a beautiful experience and to interconnect people for a greater good. And with a friend, who is actually here, sitting here with us, we started a venture that we called Sikana. Uh, the idea was very simple. The idea was to collect all the knowledge all around the world in short video programs built with experts and teachers who had beautiful things to share about biointensive agriculture, how to do first aid, and everything to provide a skill set to anyone, anywhere. The, the NGO that we created was growing pretty fast, and we started to go meet with some of the CEO of big companies to tell them the following. Instead of investing their money into manipulative marketing to do advertising and tell people to buy their product, they could invest with us and sponsor our work to provide a skill set to the people and build beautiful educational programs. We ended up being successful, and some companies, we. Decathlon and Kingfisher in particular, gave us 3.2 million euros. At that moment, I left Apple and focused on building this platform. We ended up creating 2,300 videos dubbed in 10 languages, and very quickly, we reached 1 billion courses delivered all over the world. It felt amazing. We felt that we had the hack. We were redirecting this money from the marketing to education, and we thought that we could do that at large scale. However, very quickly, because of the success, the hosting costs went to the roof. And it was very hard for us to cope with that situation. 
Also, the company that were actually supporting us, quickly for them it was not enough just to know that the people were here and they were enjoying to, to know those new skills. They also realized that they wanted to have the data and of course we are totally against that. So two years after leaving Apple, I actually ended up in a situation where we were bankrupt and we had to restart from scratch. That was a very, very painful moment. And I, I realized, like, how in the world is it possible that the project that was providing so much value for the world was not able to sustain itself financially? So I really went down the rabbit hole of how can we build something in a platform with a true decentralization? At that moment, I realized that the true value that we had created were not even the videos or the model or whatever we had been building, but it was the people themselves. All the educators and teachers and beautiful people were part of that dynamic and were building it. We had to give back the power to those people. A bit, and, and all the content and all the videos that were produced had to be hosted by the people themselves. As I was going to the decentralization model and possibilities, I realized that actually the true problem was the infrastructure, where all the content were being hosted. And I ended up meeting lots of people who were building the origin of the, they were part of the origin of the internet and rebuilding the infrastructure. One of them is Christoph de Spiegler, who is actually here sitting in the room. And, uh, and Christoph uh, had been working with lots of bricks of the internet. He was a geek and entrepreneur and he had built many companies that were all being sold to big tech giants. But he was actually working now on a new model named Threefold as a way to decentralize the entire cloud and put it back into the hands of the people. We became friends and very quickly became partner. And I realized that not only it was the right architecture for the education platform Sikana, but actually it was the right underlying infrastructure for a complete reboot of society into a new operating system. What is the internet? Let's go back a bit to the basic, because we always use the internet, but we don't know what it is. The internet is not the cables or the Wi-Fi that we have here in this room. It's about the, the web of applications and websites that are all being hosted in gigantic data centers that are actually running all our application or digital life. As I speak, for instance, right now, this video is being streamed, most probably through a data center, most probably outside France, maybe in the US, maybe in another European country. And it goes back until someone who is watching actually the live, maybe a block away from Station F. So we are working into a client server model instead of us being the internet. The current model is based on a system where most of the data of the world are being hosted into northern country. And what we see is almost a form of neocolonization, where most of the data of the source are being hosted in the north. It's pretty crazy when you think about that. If you take two people in Zanzibar, in East Coast Africa right now, as I speak, that are just sending a message between each other, this message and this interconnection that they have, their identity are being owned by a company in California, most probably Meta. These identities and information are being sold to pay for the cost of the data center in Frankfurt. But in the beginning, it was just two people in the same island willing to exchange a message between each other. So our digital life has become something primary. However, we still need always a third party to pay for that interconnection to happen. It doesn't make any sense. Like We should not accept such a model. If we look at um, this experience that we have about our digital life, we can see that this model of the internet is what we've been exporting everywhere around the world. Three years ago, as I was uh, doing a trek in Peru, I ended up in this village in the middle of the Sacred Valley named Willock. And it was right after the first uh, COVID and lockdown. And actually, because of the homeschooling and distance education, Facebook had brought uh, uh, an internet connection to that village. What do you think was the expectation of the company? Of course, one of the vision was to help the people. And they said that they will not use the data. But the first thing people did was actually 
to install Facebook and start surfing the web through this application. So here we are in the middle of some of the highest mountains in the world, in a sacred spot with thousands of years of traditions. And the first experience that the people have of the internet is having their identities being stolen and their data being used for manipulative marketing to sell them industrialized goods that don't even need, most probably in the first place. So that's what we are. We are in a system where any way you want to share a message with someone, it has to go through this unbelievable system where everything needs to be stolen, your information is stolen and you are not proprietary. So we need to build and to rethink this infrastructure. We need sovereign digital life and sovereign identities that we can host ourselves where we're not being stolen. And these identities need to be for all of us. Here we are at power. And as we are building something where we want to bridge ancient wisdom with new technology, we need to think about how we can live in a world where we're not working with designers and engineers that ended up being algorithmic dopamine dealers that are just here to hook us into app, giving us some forms of design just for us to maximize our engagement because the entire business model behind is based on that. If you have seen the AI dilemma, it's exactly what we're talking about. We are right now accelerating and putting, putting AI golem uh, models inside the infrastructure while we haven't even sold the first misalignment that happened with AI with social media. It's absolute craziness. And Tristan Harris and Isa Raskin, they are asking for a pause and a, and a real dialogue about AI. But what we need is to remove those layers of complexity over complexity that has been created into the IT world. We need to rebuild the infrastructure. And what will be this conscious infrastructure? First, we need a cloud that is being co-owned by all of us. We all need to co-own the cloud. That's the first step. And that cloud that we all need to co-own, we have our identity. So you can imagine your identity as something floating on top of you. That's your identity, it's you. It's this extension of you within that cloud. And that identity runs your own data and all your application yourself. And you know what is your digital footprint. Like, Everyone here in the room should be able to know what is our digital footprint, how much digital garbage are we creating every day. Today, 10% of the resources of the world are being used and consumed because of the data center. How is it even possible that we don't know how many gigabytes we are participating into this? It is just a nonsense. And how many times you've been in a concert when you see everyone filming the exact same thing? All those films on TikTok are all being hosted somewhere, they are using energy, so we are fraying the world by saving the same videos, it doesn't make any sense. There is a recent study that shows that actually only 10% of the data being stored for the internet are actually being used for something. It means 90% are being used for nothing. So this underlying infrastructure we're talking about is a different model. It's something where for and we did the calculation, for less than a dollar per month, you can have your full-blown sovereign digital life. If you can have that for less than a dollar per month, why would you ever think about sending it to anyone? You should keep it for yourself. And here we are talking about all this ancient uh, wisdom and technology, but we need to reconnect with something. The idea itself of interconnectedness did not start with technology. And technology is just a tool. The reason why we're using it is to create a better world. That tool was not the start in place of how we interconnected as a species. As a species, we've always been interconnected since the age of time. Recently, I was in the Amazon, and re really, the, the tribes are the perfect example of that in how they connect within themselves and with the universe. Uh, the first ceremony I did, actually, uh, with the Yawanawa, um, was with uh, one of the Pages, Iskukwa, and uh, after one of the most magical nights of my life, I, uh, I must say, um, Iskukwa came to me and he said the following. He said, AI, gosto da nossa internet, do you like our internet? And uh, 
At that moment, I realized that we don't need Web3, Web4, Web5. What we need is Web0. It's a web that is diet, that is interconnected all of us, and where we can all own our digital life. It's very simple. And if we do that, we will be able to be like the mycelium and become like the mycelium of the planet and all interconnect directly so we're able to share and we're able to face the current challenges that we're seeing in the world. The other thing that he told me, and I want to share that with you, and it was very, something very beautiful, is that, and this is about really ancient wisdom. He said, you know what, the, Florian, if you think about it, the, the human being is the most evolved creatures that we see on Earth. And he created amazing things. But within that evolution, that human being has forgot the most important thing, that was our human condition. He forgot his parents and ancestors, forgot to exchange the spiritual world for material goods, and we transform money as the worst drug that the world has ever seen. As I speak right now, we've been in touch with Trifold, with lots of different governments in many countries in Africa and South America. With people who actually mean well, and I, we were surprised, but people who actually mean well for their people, and they understand that it doesn't make any sense to have all the digital life of their citizens being hosted through a very little cable directly going below the ocean into big data centers into Germany, France, or other northern countries. And um, recently, uh, actually, I moved to uh, Zanzibar, uh, so other part of the world, and uh, east coast of Africa. And uh, we found with the revolutionary government of Zanzibar, uh, nice name, we found a, a true ally in the capacity of creating a digital free zone in helping the construction of this new operating system for the world where everyone is welcome here to participate, contribute in building the tools that will be necessary at the moment that all the communities need to be having the self-sovereignty to unite and find the right solution to build a better world. And I know that all this seems to be a bit crazy, and I can feel it, because like what we're talking about is rebuilding the entire internet infrastructure, like rebuilding and rethinking, not by rewriting one more line of code, but removing the code to rewrite it, but the day before a breakthrough, it's a crazy idea. The moment that we believe that it's possible, we are no victims. Like we are all afraid now about AI. We just need to rewrite the way that we are doing the architecture behind our world. And with that, we will be able to collectively build the magic to build a better tomorrow. So you're all invited to Zanzibar, and uh, if you want to participate in building this, it will be a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Florian. Thank you. Thank you, Florian. Thank you, Florian. Thank you, Florian.